When you go on holiday, there is no finer achievement than doing absolutely nothing. Nothing on the beach, nothing by the pool. Walking kind of nowhere and chatting about nothing. As an Expedia member, you can save up to 30% when you add a hotel to your flight. So you can have a bit more money to go out there with great ambition to do absolutely nothing. Expedia. Made to travel. What's up? It's your boy, the Ben Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off for Dixville. <laughs> the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy. And flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say shake your radio more than three times, and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. Hey, the way we go. Welcome to season 17, episode number 3706. Along with Steve the Thrill Hill. The Ted Smith. Hands my cock. Thank you. I'm the men's room. On tap today, the return of Who Sucks Less. We will play profile this. Plus headlines, a men's room shout of the day, fun with listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Ted. Click, clack. Click, click, click. All right, here we go. Neighbors in Philly file a noise complaint saying those damn pickleball courts are way too loud. Meanwhile, a man walks into a Seattle Safeway and steals enough beer to get everyone at the party plowed. Yeah. Passengers have to board another plane after passenger drops a deadly deuce. Man busted a BWI with enough cocaine to get everyone good and loose. And a Florida homeowner is shocked to find someone listed their home for sale on Zillow. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now... Here's the question. All I bet you it's good day to you and yours. All right, most people don't believe in curses per se, but sometimes you're so repeatedly unlucky that you begin to think that there must be some kind of curse upon you. For example, there's a man in Wyoming. He was attacked by a grizzly bear earlier this week. Now, that's bad, but there's a guy in Montana who's probably thinking, oh, boo-hoo. You see, he was attacked by a grizzly bear as well. Twice. Same bear attack the same guy twice in one day. Then there's the North Seattle woman. Now, she was attacked at two different grocery stores on two different nights. But it turns out she was attacked by the same vagrant. She just can't get away from this guy. It's not like he's following her. He just keeps being where she is, and he decides to attack. So you're thinking to yourself, what are the odds? I don't know. What are the odds, says Sutomo Yamaguchi, who is Sutomo Yamaguchi? Well, he's the man who was in Hiroshima on August 6th, 1945, when the U.S. dropped an atomic bomb on the city. Well, he managed to survive, and three days later, he's back at his regular job explaining what happened. His regular job was in Nagasaki, and so the other atomic bomb dropped on that city. Not saying it's him, but clearly it's him. Now, he did manage to survive, but it wasn't awesome. Or there's the man in England. Now, he was struck by lightning on three separate occasions. Now, keep in mind, he survived all of the lightning strikes, but eventually, like all of us, he did die. And then to add insult to injury, two years after he died, lightning struck and destroyed his gravestone. <laughs> you start to think, dude, maybe you're cursed. And that's not unlike the woman in India that we told you about earlier this month. You might remember her. She was trampled to death by an elephant. Only to have that same elephant show up at her funeral and trample her corpse. Like we said, sometimes you are so unlucky, you just feel like you might be cursed. But it's not always you. Sometimes it's someone else. And sometimes it's just an object in your home or something around you. We have a story about a U-Haul truck. It's just a U-Haul truck. I wouldn't get in the goddamn thing. Maybe that's just me. But today, this is what we want to know. 
person, place, or thing, what is so unlucky that you swear it must be cursed? Be part of the big show called 206 421 Rock. Like the men's room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send your emails to the men's room at KISW.com. Nobody likes keeping track of a wallet full of credit cards with complicated rewards categories. And BECU members like Heather don't have to. With this card, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about it. I just use it and pay it. It's pretty simple. Keep things simple with the cashback visa from BECU. No more confusing categories, no more blackout dates. Just 1.5% cash back on every purchase. BECU. Power in people. Member compensated for participation. Cash advances and cash life transactions do not qualify as purchases. Contact BECU at 800-233-2328 for current product and rate information. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. All the jealous, way we go. Welcome to Season 17, Episode number 3,706. What a large and in charge program we have for you today. Guaranteed future repeat. Uh, Steve, once again, the return of uh, Who Sucks Less. You bring us three stories from the news each and every week. Mm-hmm. They all suck, but it's up to us to determine out of the three which one sucks the least. Now, this week is going to be as brutal as it has been the last few. I mean, I have not thought the last few were brutal, so if you ask it like that, probably. Okay. Uh, I will call this one the financial edition. Financial? All of these come down mm-hmm. to money. And okay. some people... Some people make decisions that, even though it's illegal, we agree with the decision that they made. Uh, other people, you cannot believe how good they have it and how stupid they choose to be. Okay. All right. Who Sucks Less is coming up. Uh, also today, as we head on over to the Odyssey app exclusively for the Men's Room Happy Hour, episode number 197. If you don't have that Odyssey app, download it now. It's absolutely free. And then from there, search for the Men's Room Happy Hour channel. That goes live every Monday uh, through Friday at 6 o'clock. Keep in mind, it is explicit. It is an adult-only part of our program. But we give more Men's Room uh, every single weekday for Correct. you. Correct. And today, I believe we're going to figure out how just a regular joke can land a plane. Is that what we're going to do, Mike? To figure out how just a regular old guy, maybe, maybe you're on the airplane and, oh my God, what happened to the pilot? Can you land that plane? Are we talking a passenger jet or the smaller one? Well, that kind of comes into factor. You it know, does. It's, it's not exactly... Uh it's not exactly a one a one uh, one trick pony here, right? Because the one there are dude factors involved recently landed the smaller Cessna one. Look, he was not a pilot; he's still That's scared, correct. right? But I feel like there's fewer controls, etc. As where the passenger mm-hmm. jet, a whole different thing. I will say this: whatever percentage of chance you believe that you have to land that plane, it's too high. <laughs> <laughs> That's all on the way with the Men's Room Happy Hour. Maybe some uh, effing news if we have time. But uh, join us for episode 197 as we close in on our 200th episode of the Woo! Men's Room Happy Hour. I know you've been counting that down. We're going to have a huge party. Uh, they'll bring in pizza and everything else. Uh, today on the question, person, place, or thing, what is so unlucky you swear it must be cursed? This story hot off the press as of yesterday. A woman was transported to a hospital after her U-Haul truck went approximately 50 feet over the side of a ravine Monday morning. Happened about 6 a.m. on uh, June 27th in the area of Baldy Mesa Road and Mesquite Street in the community of West Oak Hills. Baldy Mesa Road and Mesquite Street. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a place where you could get some pretty good ribs. San Bernardino County firefighters arrived on the scene and confirmed a box truck was on its side with a female driver still trapped in there. So firefighters, they hiked on the slope and uh, they got the woman out out of the vehicle. California Highway Patrol officer investigating the incident uh, said the woman stated she was attempting to park so she could rest for the night. Somehow ended up driving over the embankment. While mostly as a precaution, the woman was transported to a local hospital via ground ambulance. Not the biggest deal in the world. Sure, sure. It should be noted, the same U-Haul truck was involved in a vehicle fire. The day before, the vehicle was on fire on the inside of the bed. It was being towed when the fire started in the cargo area. So it wasn't even right. It wasn't even moving on its own. It's being towed. It's being it towed. burst into flames. It burst into flames. It was quickly extinguished. They got the motor fixed. They got it back. The back of the door, by the way, if you saw a picture of the U-Haul that had turned over down in the ravine, you could see the entire back of it was, was fried. It was burned. And they still running that thing. They still running it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Got to make money. Yeah, I get it, man. Mm-hmm. It's crazy stuff. Then we'll stay here at home for one more story real quick here. A North Seattle woman who said she was attacked twice over the weekend by the same man at two different grocery stores in Ballard is warning other shoppers to be on the alert after she called police for help after one of the incidents. But no one from the department ever arrived. 
Chelsea Gray was talking to Como News. She said she called 911 on Saturday to get help from the Seattle Police Department, uh, but left the Fred Meyer store in Greenwood after police did not arrive fast enough. She said she left the store because she wanted to take her two young sons home because they were frightened after uh, witnessing the ordeal. And not to cut off the story real quick, they they did redo the uh, the Fred Meyer in Greenwood. I, you probably they to redid one. it. This happened in like November, okay. late right. last year. But I think it's she went to the one that's been redone. Actually, right. okay, because I, I had one, but that's one by Castle. Yeah, I nice shopped story. at both of these grocery stores. Yeah, me too. According to Gray, the first attack happened in the grocery store's parking garage while she was there with her four and six year old boys. My children are in the car screaming. They don't know what's happening other than something scary is happening. He came from behind and knocked her over, Gray said, adding that she then called 911 to report the incident, but never saw a Seattle police officer arrive, even after waiting at least 20 minutes. Police never came. But just a day later, the unthinkable happened when she said she had a second encounter with the same man in a different store. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, I see another car coming at me, a cart. Uh, Gray was about to exit the store when she said the man entered the Crown Hill Safeway. <laughs> yep, been to that one. And lunged at her. Gray was able to crouch behind a nearby store merchandise fixture before help arrived. The man did exit the store and fled from the scene. I don't believe he was ever caught. I don't think so. He's just the guy that for some reason, when he runs into this woman, he doesn't like her very much. I mean, what are the... And she probably went... And look, they're, they're in fairly close proximity to each other, these two particular stores. But right. you know she went to that one going... I just want to go to that Fred Meyer because that guy's there. So I'll go to the Safeway. It's across from Patty's Egg Nest. Mm-hmm. My dentist is right over there. Like, I'll go to this one. Well, Here's the same dude, and he does the same freaking well, I mean, thing. Is that random, or do you think he recognized her? I, I think it's random. Yeah, I, I mean, look, I, I will say this. About two weeks ago, my wife and I were over there, uh, again, eating breakfast at Patty's Egg Nest, and it's in the same basic parking lot as the Safeway. The Crown Hill. And I went out to smoke. Yeah, the Crown Hill Safeway. And when I went out to smoke, there are some, some odd folks traversing that particular parking lot. And I made mental note of it. You know, they're, they're in their world. Mm-hmm. I understand. Based on the condition that I saw the people, it's like three guys that caught my eye in particular, they they don't remember what happened 20 minutes ago. Okay. that That's my... I don't think he's targeting her. I think it's just like... Like I said, it's the same general area. Grocery stores are a great place still to go. Su- it still sucks. She, like, she probably gets her groceries me. delivered. Yeah. I would think at this point. He got a job now, as a delivery driver. Now, based on everything that you've told me, it sounds like, and you've shared with the listeners, that your brother is a cursed individual. You're talking now, about dogs? I am talking about dogs. Talking about not, dogs? Not, not about his career. He's no. very successful in a lot of different things. Look, academic. You can't have it all, though. Academically blessed, uh, canine cursed, or there's something in his body. Where Does he smell? He's like, magnetic to is dogs. Is he the teeth. banana? Of the B world? He's got to be. He's got to you know, be. Because there's something about his pheromones or something about the way he looks. He doesn't do anything. He's the nicest guy. And like he and my father, they're kind of the same person, right? They're genuinely nice people. Dogs are fine with my dad. I think they understand on some level. My dog or my dad will kill you. Mm-hmm. So I think there's a certain respect. My brother, I've never seen him mean to a dog. I've heard him raise his voice once in my life with him. All right. I mean, once, one time, I've heard him even raise his voice. But when he was a kid and he delivered papers, and I understand you're a little more susceptible when you're out there delivering papers. But look, your dad delivered, or granddad delivered mail for however many years. He delivered, uh, he worked for the post office for 35 years. I guarantee you that in the one year that my brother delivered papers, he was attacked by and bitten by more dogs than your grandfather was in the entirety. My, in the my, entirety my grandfather could career. summon a pack of wolves from a mile away in the woods <laughs> right. to come and save a drowning toddler from a river to pull the baby out for safety. <laughs> right. He's like My grandfather's amazing with animals. My brother is the opposite. It's not animals, it's just dogs. Every well, dog dogs, that means yeah. my brother wants to kill him, period. And they will attack. And like, so we would be mm-hmm. outside. There's like eight of us. We're just kids, man. And whatever family's dog, they'd trot out to the yard, and they'd sniff all of us. They'd play with all of us. They'd wag their tail. And I remember one dog in particular, it kind of played with all of us. The the adults were out talking because my parents were there. So they're talking like on the doorstep about whatever. This dog played with all of us. And again, wagging its tail. It just looked at my brother. It did not growl. It did not bark. It looked at him. Tail stopped wagging and just bit him. It wasn't like vicious. I mean, it clamped in. And back then, you know, you still got that eight-inch long steel rabies shot mm-hmm. into your ass cheek. He couldn't sit down for three days. I'm pretty sure during one summer, he probably sat down to eat dinner maybe two days out of a seven-day week. 
Because he was constantly getting these rabies shots. Yeah. Man. You, and it didn't matter if they just gave one to you. If you got bitten two weeks later, you went back to the hospital. You got another shot in your ass. Yeah. And this dude yeah. would just stand up and eat and look miserable. And I did not. I'm like, dude, we know all the same dogs. You know, we're kids. We're in the same mm-hmm. neighborhood. Why do they hate you? Even when we live. So now we move back to upstate New York. And our neighbors across the street, they had two dogs. And they were okay. But back then, somehow dogs just never left the property. Like, they didn't have a fence. And they'd stand they on the around. edge of the property, and they'd kind of bark, but they were fine. But where we lived, we lived out in the cut. So it's, you know, you have 15 mailboxes together. So you go over to get the mail. Behind the mailboxes, they had their uh, their log pile for the approaching wintertime, okay? And they were watching their cousin's dog. And about once a year, they'd watch their cousin's dog. Their cousin's dog was this big-ass white husky. And they kept it outside. They had one of those massive chains on it. And this dog hated everything and everyone. And as a kid, a husky might as well be a wolf, right? It's just that big. <laughs> but the chain was long enough that it could get on top of this log pile, stand over your head, and bark down at you while you're getting the mail, mm-hmm. right? And so I dealt with this every day because the one job, according to my dad, that we had to do is get the mail when he get off the school bus. Fine. I hated doing it when this dog was over there. And here's his dog. And it was like two days in a row. So day three, I get off the bus. And I don't, man, it's like your spidey sense. I said, I'm not doing it, man. So I just have a bad feeling. I don't see the dog anywhere. I got a bad feeling. I walk in the house. Of course, this is the one day. My father's home early from work. I walk in. Steven, where's the mail? I said, oh, I, I, man, I'm tired. It's got a bad. God damn it, man. You got one job to get home from school. You just get to, we feed you. We do everything. You just get the mail. So now my brother's standing there. My brother decides. <laughs> it's always a guilt trip with your parents. It, it always is, right? <laughs> like, it is. Like, like, and I do it to my kids. You got one thing. I you do one thing. And so he is doing then what I do now with my kids. I don't ask much of it. Just get the mail. That's all you got to do. So my brother's standing there. He decides. You don't pay the bills. He, right. You know, all this crap. Because <laughs> I didn't like, get the mail. Like, why do I have to get all I this crap? And I get it. I get it, dude. But it's like, no. So my brother, he's going to pipe up. He's going to be the brave son. And he goes, what are you, chicken? And I said, my exact response was, well, if you're not chicken, why don't you go get the mail? Because that's how kids talk. So he said, I will. And kind of a long driveway, disappeared through some trees. My father's still just giving me the third degree. About, and that goddamn brother's out there. He's got to get. So our conversation gets interrupted because you just hear this disembodied <laughs> voice go, no, help, dog. <laughs> Swear to God, that's help. <laughs> dog. Help, dog. That's his exact quote. Father looks at me, just shakes his head. I always remember he saw the necktie on from work and all that. Rolls up a newspaper, and he's says, God damn, you just hear him grumbling, walks out the front door. He disappears out of view, and then you just hear, oh. right? And then about two seconds later, he's walking back up the driveway with my brother, who's kind of shaking. The dog never bit my brother, but I had him, according to my father, since my brother did not want to talk about it so much. And keep in mind, I'm smiling now ear to ear, like, <laughs> ooh, brave man. Was that big-ass <laughs> dog that I just told you something was up with that mofo? He had gotten off of the chain somehow, got my brother across the street, his back's pressed against the tree. My father said, the dog, all the hairs up, staring at my brother, every tooth bare, just the, and my brother's just shaking. So I'm like, what'd you do? So I rolled my newspaper, that bitch over the head, knocked him out. He's got these like, problem solved, man. So, and that's the one thing my father put with me. He said, look, if a dog was going to bite you, you let him know what's up real quick. And while it's easy for him to say that, I don't necessarily have his confidence. Sure. And I'll say, but dude, he handled it. And that was it. My brother never gave me grief again. And I'm like, dude, the curse mm-hmm. is still on. And I'm convinced that dog broke off the chain because somehow it knew if I break this chain, the one of these dudes I actually hate, he'll be the one that shows up being my brother. Now did that dog still get up on the right. wood pile and still bark at you though? Yeah, sure as hell, okay, man. All right, all right. Yeah, it didn't but, break out again. You're right. I don't, it did I, not I don't break know what out it is, again, but, but it's clearly just your brother. It's him. I'm telling yeah. you, it's him, man. Right, because I mean, like, I'm the opposite. Since I was a kid, like, I'm just good with dogs. Yeah. yeah for whatever I try, Right. But I'm just like, yeah, that's crazy. I, man, I'm t- he, he will not get a pet dog. And I understand. I'm like, your pet would turn on you and kill you. My, like, uh, I have a buddy that got bit when he was a kid. So he was very sketchy of dogs. Sure. But over time, he kind of got used to him again. And he's never been bit and, bitten again. It was just one dog on a bad day. He even owns a dog now. Yeah. But your brother, I'm just like, I don't know if I've ever heard of him. But he would never buy a dog. No. I don't think his brother would ever get a dog. Well, no, There's obviously no not, because they yeah. bite. He couldn't uh, even if, go to the SPCA. He, he couldn't go to dog rescue, rescue puppy. puppy. He, rescue he puppy. couldn't. Why? If my brother walked in the SP, he with, could raise a dog with in the Sarah McLaughlin singing, those dogs, you know those dogs you feel so bad for because they're always trembling and they look cold and they got all the goo in their eyes. 
If my brother walked in there to rescue her, they would turn quick. That it would. I'm telling you, to be a free for all. Yeah, like my brother has a dog that he got as a rescue, and it's a decent sized dog. Is it the beagle? No, that beagle's long gone. Thank God. Uh, <laughs> he, Thank God. Yeah, this seriously. dog Rocky, he's a little bigger. He's a mutt, but he. I don't know. It's like maybe a husky or something in him. So he's a no. bigger dog. But whoever owned him before wasn't a very nice man. You can typically so tell. So he yeah. hates dudes, right? But when I walk in, like he's barking at me and yep. stuff, but I'm just kind of like, you know, like I'll get low or be like, all right, Rocky, you're fine. Or the dog looks at you and says, you ain't man enough. Mm-hmm. Oh. If your brother walked in, he, Rocky would bite him. Yeah. I guarantee. Hey, look, my, my, my sister, one of her roommates, has a huge ass pit bull. I mean, a thick pit bull. Loves my daughter. First time I go down and see her and see her new place. Mm-hmm. So I, I haven't been introduced to her roommates yet. So of course I walk in. The first thing they do is give me a blunt. So I'm sitting there smoking a blunt. My kid's like, "Hey, do you want to you want to see my room?" I'm like, not really, but you know, whatever. I'll go. <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd rather just sit here and watch f- football game and smoke this. She's like, "Well, just let me see. Me, just show me. I just want you, see, you can see where I, my room is and stuff." And I was like, "All right, all right." So I walk down this long hallway, and I don't know there's a dog in there. She hadn't told me that. She opens the door, and there's there's this dog standing there. And I mean, he just gets up on all fours in her bed and just. <laughs> she's like, "He doesn't like men at all." <laughs> I, think the last, I think the last guy just just must have abused him. I was like, "Oh, hey, 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 I'm, I'm good, man." <laughs> Close that the dog, door. Close the, dog the door. door. She's like, "He won't come after you." All of a sudden, he's just leaning forward. I'm just like, "That dog is like eye level right now on the bed." You know what I mean? <laughs> You're telling me that right, the dog again, feels different. That's somewhat normal. Normal, right? right? You're good, Miles. You're good with dogs, yeah. but right, like even I. There's sometimes you you look at a dog, you, and know. you just know, like I'm not going to pet this dog or even try. We're not yeah. friends, but I've never met anybody that gets bit as much as your brother does. It's <laughs> no. just like dogs. Every like, one of them. They like sent out an email. It's like bite this dude. <laughs> this guy. I think they make squeaky toys smell like him, or something, yeah. man. Like so when they see him, like ooh, that's the real version. Maybe they him. just know he always wanted to be a ref. <laughs> First in place or a thing when it's so unlucky to swear it must be cursed. 206-421-ROCK. Nobody likes keeping track of a wallet full of credit cards with complicated rewards categories. And BECU members like Heather don't have to. With this card, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about it. I just use it and pay it. It's pretty simple. Keep things simple with the cashback visa from BECU. No more confusing categories. No more blackout dates. Just 1.5% cash back on every purchase. BECU. Power in people. Member compensated for participation. Cash advances and cash lock transactions do not qualify as purchases. Contact BECU at 800-233-2328 for current product and rate information. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. Our question, person, place, or thing. What is so unlucky you swear it must be cursed? 206-421-ROCK. A couple of quick ones here. Somebody says, what's so unlucky it must be cursed? Easy. The Mariners, no other explanation. Aren't they crushing the O's right now? <laughs> they are absolutely decimating your O's right now. Now, that said, Abraham it still leads it's the O's. The Orioles are the other awful team in Major League Baseball, so this doesn't mean much. Yeah, the Mariners should have a good week. You have the Orioles in town, then the A's. Right, should. But he adds to this, time to sacrifice the Moose. Hey! No, hey, oh, hey! Mariner Moose is fine. He has nothing to do with him. You don't know that. What if you find out yeah, he did? They what have they? a curse, though. What? What's their the curse? The Trident. Mm-hmm. Like, I forget the whole thing, but the Trident was gone for years. Basically, they brought it back, and they just have been terrible. I'm saying it's the Moose. It's I'll the Trident. The moose. And the, then, moose, uh, the moose has great social media. I love that Moose. He does have great social media. Yeah, what, if you, what if you found out the Moose somehow... Uh, you know, like Chucky, right? Somehow he has brought evil upon the Mariners. We Man, just... the Moose has been here through the good and the bad. <laughs> Leave the Moose alone. Yeah, the Moose is legend. That's what he wants you to believe. Uh, there's somebody, see if you uh, agree with this, Ted. It says, I know it's not cursed, but I can't bring myself to wear my white Sounders jersey. The team never won, says maybe once or twice, while playing in them, and they lost every time I wore it, so now it just sits in my closet. Yeah, I get that. There's no way it's that specific person, but there's certain stuff I do with sports still. We all do. We all do. Yeah. Seems like they play pretty well now, Jimi Hendrix kid. Yeah. The times I've seen him playing that, like, okay, they're, they look good. They're doing better than Jimmy. Yeah. Let's put it that way. I think they do have a jersey or two, though. They definitely were like, we don't win in these. We're putting them away. Like, the Seahawks were like, we're never wearing the all highlighter green again. Please don't. One, it hurts the eye. Do they lose most of the time when they wear that? They just, I want to say, they, Mike, what do they wear? Once on like a Thursday night, they wore like the rave green. Is that their color rush? Yeah, well, the they, NFL makes every was. team do it. Like, you have to do it at least once. The NFL makes you do that. And that's, yeah, I think that's the only time that they do it is if we play Thursday night. But they've only done it once. And then Pete was like, we're not wearing that again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, even DeMatha had some of those things. Like, they had won a bunch of titles, and then I forget what it was. Maybe it was the all blues or something. But then you lose a couple like championship games in a row, and it was like retire those kids, yeah, don't retire wear them those anymore. jerseys. We're not wearing them. The neon, if I'm not mistaken, was the one that Russell was wearing when he busted his finger. 
I, I, I was at that game. You see the hype video? Oh, that was, so, man, but just to come back from that injury like he oh, did. Yeah. It was in the amazing. video. It was I'm glad he made the video Jesus. to go along. It was it was unheard of. I thought of Alex Smith when I saw that. Yeah, video. sure. Alex Smith was like, "Hey, I got nothing on you this know, guy." That was just the Oscars. Don 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 don. How weren't, did he do it? We weren't ready to take him back. Somebody else fed him, so he didn't yeah. have to use that hand. We we took a cho- took a chance putting him back in the slot. <laughs> oh, hello, Rick. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 You guys hear me all right? Yes, indeed. What? Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's a place. Um, are you familiar with the Mountain Loop Highway? Yeah. Up north? Yeah, it's, um, what, east of Granite Falls, more or less. Um, yeah. Anyways, me and, me and buddies have been going out there camping, shooting, uh, you name it. It's beautiful out there. Um, a lot of great times. A lot of not so great times. Um, for example, uh, I'll just rattle off a few. Um, got arrested on mushrooms out there. <laughs> well, that's terrible. Were you arrested because you were on mushrooms, or did you get arrested and you happened to be on mushrooms? I uh, happened to be on mushrooms. It was really dumb. A park ranger came through at, like, not a forest ranger, came through at about 10 o'clock, wanted to see IDs for the beers. Turns out I had a really petty warrant, and they hauled me in. What was so your warrant was for? Fun. I can't remember. It was. It, I was Grand Theft Auto. Day. You honestly can't no, remember was, why it, someone had a. I just feel like that's something I'd remember. It was. This was like '08, maybe. So it's been a few years. Um, well, if you if you have to go to court for something and you just don't show up, you'll get a bench. Right, 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 right. So sometimes it I is think something. It might have been something. Yeah, something like, like that. Like I got a track. I got a ticket on a boat once. And it never got paid, and then I had a bench warrant. But it just, right, there was nothing really serious. I right. was driving somebody else's boat that didn't have the right registration. That is serious, okay. Ted. Yeah. Take this stuff seriously. Um, so what else has happened yeah, then? I was, um, uh, I was up at the ice caves. If, if you're familiar with that area, Big Four ice caves, um, me and the, some buddies, uh, somebody got killed when we were there. Well, so, gee, you know, I, and, and that's not a good place to be in the fall or the spring. No. Uh, yeah, and, and it was, and the person, it was a a child, unfortunately. Um, they, she wasn't even by the ice caves. A chunk of ice broke off and came and rolled down into her. Damn. I do remember the story. Yep. Um, yeah. Um, and then another time, a buddy of mine, he's got a prosthetic on one of his legs from his knee down, was up on a log, fell off, uh, broke his collarbone, broke his scapula, broke three ribs, and partially collapsed his lung. I gotta ask, how, how did he? How did he lose his leg? Do you know? I think I think he had his. Um, I wasn't right there when he fell, but I'm assuming that he had his prosthetic leg, maybe on the outside. Correct. You know, I'm just wondering. I was saying, how did he originally yeah, lose did, his? Yeah. Leg? What, what was the, the process that he lost his leg? Oh, um, I believe he was born. Uh, he had okay. some um, okay. ab- abilities when gotcha. he was born. Gotcha. Okay. 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 Like not having a and full it, leg that, um, that qualifies. Yeah, I don't know the whole details on that. Um, well, it's just the half details. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I almost drowned up in the river up there years ago. Buddy almost drowned like two years ago. Do you keep going to uh, this place? Yes. <laughs> okay. It's beautiful. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Okay. Are you always on shrooms when you're there? No, no, not re- not recently. I'm not opposed to that. It's just the timing hasn't worked. Out. Okay, yeah, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Sometimes they're on acid. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> Switch your drugs. You get what you can get. <laughs> that's what you do. <laughs> I like this one. Got a comment here. It says, shaving my lady bits is a curse. Every time I'm anticipating getting laid and shave right before, the guy cancels last minute. But when I don't shave, they don't cancel. She says it happens every time. So you're the furry mm. lady. I mean, that's yeah. how the guy... Oh, you remember that girl, Sheila? Oh. Yeah. I mean, you could just trim it all the time. It could, look, I can't speak for all guys. I don't care. If you're anticipating getting laid and you're cool to do that with me, like, yeah. let's go. Oh, yeah. I had one that caught me off guard, and it didn't stop me. No. It did. It caught you. Like, you just... You anticipate... Right, you're right. You it know. was just different. Right. It was like... <laughs> different. <laughs> Yeah. Like, was it trimmed into a weird shape? Not trimmed at all? What, I mean, trimmed to say, like a T on it? No, it just wasn't as, uh, mm, I'm trying to think. <laughs> like, you know, when you're walk, like walking in a forest and there's just like, 
I, I don't know how to explain it. Like, yeah, yeah, it was kind of. It wasn't that it was like, like not like a putting surface. It was like the rough, but it was like very whimsy kind of. Rough. I guess so it kind of. Oh, so it was longer. Like yeah, long. Yeah, look, it seemed like there was a pony grass. Yeah, okay. it was like a ponytail. So, so it was. It was the skirt on the green, is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't. It's not quite fairway, but it's also not quite uh, putting green. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what I'm saying. Yeah. Just they caught me off guard. <laughs> yeah, right. But I, didn't stop you. I, I like didn't it. stop. The, the parks. The, the garden would have been a five, by the way. <laughs> the parks worker didn't come off and uh, brush all the foliage off yeah. the trail. Is what you're saying? Yeah, like I was, I was, I was on the other. I, I was somewhere in between the two uh, fairways. <laughs> all right, cool. <laughs> How'd you play? Tell you what, man, I dominated that. <laughs> did, you, did you play well? <laughs> that's the main thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. Good. Person, place, or thing. What is uh, so unlucky you swear must be cursed? 206 421 Rock. Hello, Steve. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, aloha, brothers. Hola. How are you guys doing today? Good? Doing good. Doing great, brother. Thanks, man. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, so, my story is kind of a sad one, but. Cool. Uh, I first want to just get this out of the way. I do not want to be friends with the last guy. Man. Hey. Jeez. Who's got buddies that want to go with them like that? But uh, my problem has been uh, finding the right girl, you know. Um, you think you're alone. That, I, Do you think you are alone in this? Well, no, I can't be the only person that, that can't find the right person. But uh, I do real well. But not when it comes to, you know, finding the right person and getting married. And, you know, it just, it just, I can't, I can't figure it out. Are you dying to get married? I mean, like, honest to God, man, it, it. I'm married. It is what it is. It's fine. You know no, what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not dying to get married. I'm dying to meet the person I want to hang out with all the time. Okay. You know, right. so someone I really want to spend time with. Uh, someone that, like the last one I met, that Jack White, she asked me if she could borrow 50 bucks after we went out to dinner. I mean, come on. <laughs> that's just not right. Yeah. Well, was, this, was, this, was this a first date? The first date, yep. Yeah, that's the big red flag. Wait, hold on. Did you pay for dinner? Absolutely. And then, okay, where'd you go? Uh, we we actually went to Ivers. Oh, beautiful! That's and then nice at the end of the day, she goes, "Thank you so much. That's awesome. Can I have fifty bucks?" Yeah, and you know, she was a school teacher. Uh, I, I met her outside after the show, and I took her into the VIP club, the the spacey little club thing there, and uh, we got along really good. I said, "Hey, would you like to go out to dinner?" She said, "Great," and uh, and then she put her hand on my hand in the car and just. I thought, wow, this is going really good. And then, bam! <laughs> can I borrow fifty bucks? Why? Why did so, she tell you why she needed the fifty bucks? Nope. Hmm. But I knew the night was over because I absolutely wasn't going to give her 50 bucks. Well, you didn't probably have 50 bucks on either. Oh, I absolutely have 50 bucks. Okay. I have 50 bucks on me right now. Yeah, See, I still wouldn't give it to yeah, her. Yeah, I don't know. No. I, I just, I, I, it's, just, it's just a principle thing. I, I, was, I think I was more shocked than anything, but that's kind of the way things go. I mean, I meet people, we get along good, but it just doesn't want to. Um, ah, uh, yeah, you get, yeah, yeah. I think you'll, you'll one of these days. You know, you never know when it's going to happen. Yeah, right. I'm just like, dude. It, you know, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. It'll so what? I mean, either you get the and look. Here's the difference. All right, the reason I don't feel bad for Steve there is simply this: I haven't found the one I want to hang out with. Blah blah blah. Fine, but I do real well. Okay, then no problems. Yeah. It's, if you are lonely and I'm sending it home, and girls just don't like me. Go, all right, man, this sucks. I can see how that's overwhelming. Sure. I can see how that crushes your ego. If you can go play the field, whether you want to or not, but if you have that ability, mm -hmm. don't sweat it. Because one thing, for sure, if you do real well, that means you're meeting more people, which means inevitably, yeah. statistically, you will find that person. Look, Mariners really want to make the playoffs. Yeah. Just one year. But they still play baseball. They do Even play baseball. Even though they never will make the Professionally. They still get to play baseball. Yeah. So they still have fun playing the same sport as love this sport and playoff teams. <laughs> yeah, love the sport. Yeah. I can't brag about something, but I'm a professional baseball I'm player. A Mariners fan. I don't feel bad for you. You're still playing ball. Yeah, what the hell? Just not at a high level. Yeah, once you said, but I do real well. Like, well, then what is what is the problem? <laughs> what, what exactly is the problem? All these women like you, but you're not with any one woman where you have to ignore the advances of women you find hot. The problem is what? Could be like the Raiders and just go ahead and change your location. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, look, man. If you fish the hole out, I mean, go to a different part of the lake. There you go. <laughs> Person, place, or thing. What is so unlucky you swear it must be cursed? 206 421 Rock. Stop pressing. Yeah. That's another thing. Yeah. Take a breath. Don't worry. You know what? Do it. We're talking about baseball analogies. Take a spoonful of dish soap. Sometimes I get you out of a slump. 
Really? So you never heard that one? No. no. Oh, if you're if you're a hitter and you can't hit, you're going days without a hit. Yeah, you got to do a spoonful. It's just about mentally tricking your mind. Hmm. You're eating dish soap. Yeah. And then what what does that trick your mind? What is the? You have no idea. Just you don't want to eat those sunflower thing I've heard like about. baseball players will do because you just want to. You want you would try anything to get out of that slump. Your whole career is based on the fact you're, you can you're hit. You're a hit. Right. I'm going to go rally cab. I think. Okay. Perch and place the thing. What is so unlucky? You, uh, you swear it must be cursed. 206 421 Rock. And by the way, I heard a comedian say this years ago for our friend Steve there. It's real simple. He said, Look, think about falling in love. It's like stepping in dog ass. You probably didn't do it on purpose. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? No, just, no, no, no. You look down at your shoe and go, Oh, man, I stepped in love and I can't wash it you off. Can't, you can't go looking for it. It's just like the person who texted in about shaving her legs or not. That's just kind of how I'm life works. I'm talking about legs, friend. I understand. But I you mean, talking about the high leg. Right. The high, high, high leg. The how, how. <laughs> how, 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 meow, meow. Hello, Spencer. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. So it seems like uh, it could be any day of the week, any time of the week or time of the day at any airport. If I've got a ticket to fly somewhere, that DAG security line is going to be slammed. And more so from what Ted told me and a couple other people I know who've flown out uh, recently, it's, it's, it's only getting worse. Yeah, I've actually got a flight tonight. I'm packing right now, and I'm going to get there three hours really because I know it's going to be you know, I heard... Uh, you just need your flight to take off, man. You know, I, mean, De- I don't know if you're flying Delta or not, but Delta, I read, is offering people like, uh, hey, would you like to fly sometime else? We'll make that happen for you. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, forget the airlines. I'm telling you, last time I went, I had a 945 flight. I got in the security line at 750. Barely made my flight. Yeah, that's craziness. Yeah. Are, you, are you TSA yeah, pre-screened? I'm not, but it might be worth just doing that. Yeah, yeah. How often do you fly? For the, uh, not too often, so... Yeah, I don't know if it's worth paying for it or doing that. I've seen that clear system they've got, but I did clear, and actually, the only reason I did clear, I, I just hate to be bothered to do stuff. There's nothing wrong with all this, but I was with Castle of Miles. We're flying back from Sacramento. You guys have what Global Pass or whatever the hell it is. Yeah, right? yeah, pre-screen. so pre-screen, and the line was stupid long. As it turns out, Clear was pitching themselves. So this woman walks over and goes, "Hey, would you like to sign up for Clear?" I said, look, it works out this simple because I hate this kind of S. Can I get to that line faster? She says, yes. I signed up for clear. Poof. There you go, man. And it makes a big ass difference. It really does. It's not yeah, even about the line. But if you go my roads, you don't have to download another app. Yeah, that's my thing. I got another <laughs> freaking app on my phone. But just to get out of waiting in line. I'm fine with that, yeah. but that's honestly all it came down to. I'm looking at that line like I don't want to stand in that line. I, I've, I've had I've had trouble with just 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 the way things have worked out as far as planes getting there on time, missing flights, nothing mm-hmm. that I've done wrong. Just the fact that it's just been last two flights have been ridiculous. Yeah, I'm just saying that that has less to do with luck and more to yeah, do with the state that's of just, things. That's just Man, the way pilot it shortage. Don't get paid mm-hmm. enough. Blah blah blah. Mine was they had to turn the flight around, or they had to uh, they had to get someone off the airplane. Before the plane came down to get me and turn around. So in Atlanta, the flight was going down to Florida, which is an hour flight. Right. They clean up real quick, put people on, fly back to Atlanta, right? They had boarded the flight and somebody lost a goddamn mind on the plane. Yeah. So they had to then uh, bring people on the plane to get this, to person, get this person off, off the, plane, the plane. Which took the time. To, they had an incident. Uh, That's such a broad a term. Or something, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And apparently, I guess, they had, they, had, they, had, they had pulled away from the gate. And they had started to taxi, and then this incident ha- this incident happens. But they turn the plane around when they taxi, and the plane there was already a plane waiting to right. go into their gate. So the gate that they just left had already been there's a plane that's you know getting people off of it now. Yeah, whatever. That, you know what, man? That's what I think. Look, if you're going to have an incident on a plane, can you? Do it before they tax you away from the gate, or can you do it at least upon final descent? Because to me, I don't want to have to go back to the gate because you're a jackass, and I don't want to have to make a quote-unquote emergency landing. Because it's like, look, an emergency landing, everyone's on board and agrees. Because an emergency is the engine's on fire. We lost cabin pressure. You being a jackass, like, this is not an emergency. This is not mm-hmm. an emergency. I can go handle this guy for you. If, I, if we can beat his ass unconscious, can we continue to our final destination, because I feel like that's one of the few times you get a unanimous yes vote. If you said, ladies and gentlemen, 
the passenger sitting in seat 7B agrees, he will get up and beat that guy's ass. <laughs> if we can, mm-hmm. right? And just show of hands. Who's that? Because I'd be like, hell yeah. Forget the air marshal. Let us take care of it. Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> it's amazing, uh, too. You could make it all the way onto the plane and then have the breakdown. Yeah, like, man, with all the security, this all early. the gate agents. Right. Like, nobody could figure out this person was, wasn't was all there. Yeah. Right. But I just keep thinking to myself, all right, buddy, well, then step on the gas. <laughs> right. Get this thing back. But the bottom line is, you can't. They just don't go that high on those short flights. Right, right. You can't just get up there and jam it. I mean, <laughs> they're just going to. Putzing around, I'm like, oh god! And of course, it's always the same thing. You know, the the worst three words, you know, are full. The worst five words, <laughs> we have closed the door. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yep, it's like, oh no, it's, 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 it's like once the door closes, it's like your parents having sex. Doors close, <laughs> right? I'm sick, man. Come on, I'm like, yeah, yeah. People used to be scared to fly. Now it's scary getting through the airport. <laughs> like when that pl- when those wheels finally take off, I'm like, thank God. Yeah. I know. I know. And thank God you're paying <laughs> three times as much for it now than you were before when it's just normal. Birds of plays a thing when it's so unlucky you swear it must be cursed. 206 421 Rock. Nobody likes keeping track of a wallet full of credit cards with complicated rewards categories. And BECU members like Heather don't have to. With this card, I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about it. I just use it and pay it. It's pretty simple. Keep things simple with the cashback visa from BECU. No more confusing categories, no more blackout dates. Just 1.5% cash back on every purchase. BECU. Power in people. Member compensated for participation. Cash advances and cash lot transactions do not qualify as purchases. Contact BECU at 800-233-2328 for current product and rate information.